sixth graders, and they love the yeah, scary, the, what was the scariest thing that ever happened to you in this place? You want, you want to know? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the thing that got my heart going the most was uh, it was on my last mission. Um, so, uh, and we practiced a lot in the simulator for about everything. We had Unity attached to the Uber docking station, and we were doing our rendezvous. And we yes. came up around the FGB, and I flew it right down into the yes. payload bay. And I couldn't see it out the windows because the Unity node was there blocking the field. <clears throat> so I had a centerline camera looking up at it, and it camera on the end of the arm looking at it and then those two small monitors over on the side and based on those monitors I kept it precisely centered and uh, we had to get over a Russian ground station for them to know that the FGV was in free grip that its system wasn't controlling it because you didn't want to grab onto it and have it fight the arm and, and break the arm so we couldn't grab it until we got over a Russian ground site so we were waiting for that to happen and uh, while we were waiting it's the orbiter you can fly it uh, in six degrees of freedom. You've got a rotational hand controller that does yaw, pitch, and roll, and a translational one that goes in, out, left, right, up, down, that does translations. And it's really hard to fly six degrees of freedom at once, so we program the autopilot to maintain the attitude, and then all we have to worry about are the translations. So it hit what's called a dead band. Uh, so if you've got a band where, as long as it drifts in there, it's okay. When it hits the edge of it, it fires the jets to center things back up and it hit the dead band in the autopilot, and when it did that, uh, it, the jets fire it, and it wasn't a pure rotation. The rotation couples into a translation, and all of a sudden, this 45,000 pound mass is coming into the payload bay and toward the arm. And so I started firing the thrusters to move away from it, and nothing happened. And it, I was in the, you program the digital autopilot, there's an A and a B DAP, and you program it for whatever you're doing, and I was in the B DAP for very fine control, and, uh, very quickly I hit the ADAP and got more control power and was able to back away from it and back in and get everything all stable again. But uh, for a while there got really quiet <laughs> in the cockpit and I had one uh, one of my mission specialists, Jim Newman, uh, PhD physicist, really smart guy, he used to train astronauts in rendezvous and proximity operations, wrote the program for the laptop computer on we called it RPOP, Rendezvous Proximity Operations Program. And uh, all through the rendezvous, saying, what do you think about this? How about a couple of ups? And I'm filtering him and the RPOP and the laser range finder and our KU radar and everything. When this happened, it was just dead silence in the cockpit. And when it was all over, I said, so Jim, why didn't you offer some advice? I, said, well, I know when to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so for a little bit Thank there, you. it was kind of exciting. Oh, wow. Did he have a critique afterwards? No, he thought it was perfect. <laughs> 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 <laughs>